Okay, so hello everybody and welcome to this course, a beginner's course in topology. So, I'm Richard Southwell, I'm a researcher in Hong Kong, and I thought I'd spend a little time trying to introduce topology because it's a subject which I like a lot, and I want to introduce it in a really simple way. Basically, my kind of goal is to make a course that pretty much anybody can follow, like even if you've had absolutely no education in mathematics. Um, because I think that a lot of people, when they study maths at school, they find it kind of boring, there's like loads of equations and everything. Um, and that's because a lot of the interesting things are left out. A lot of things in topology are left out. There are some fascinating things in topology which are accessible to almost anybody and very important for the modern world but completely missed out of modern education. I, I don't really know why. But anyway, so let's start talking about topology. What is topology? It's been defined as something, some people call it rubber sheet geometry. This is a, a very rough way of defining topology. A more kind of long-winded um, definition would be it is the study of properties of shapes which are, main, which are preserved by continuous deformations. The second one sounds a little bit hard to swallow, so let's go with the first one. Think about it as rubbish heap geometry. So, for the first couple of lessons, uh, I want to talk about some surfaces. Okay? So, here's an example of a surface, essentially. The outside of this ball. So you can think of this as a kind of two-dimensional surface. This is like a little model of planet Earth, right? It's, you, you could imagine a little creature could walk around on the outside of its surface. And it's two-dimensional because this creature can go in two different directions which are kind of at right angles to each other. Okay? So, this is one kind of surface. Um, and in topology we're interested in surfaces. So, another kind of surface would be a cube. Okay, so let's make this uh, blue tack a little more cube-like now. The thing is though, in topology, the cube and the ball are actually the same from a topological viewpoint. What do I mean? Well, what I mean is, whenever you can continuously deform one shape into another, Topologically speaking, they are the same. So, let me uh, try and say this a bit more rigorously. Essentially, whenever you can deform an object um, by doing stretching and twisting um, and bending, but not breaking, and not sticking, whenever you can deform an object like that into another object, those two things are essentially considered the same. So for example, um, I have this ball shaped surface here, okay? But I'm imagining, imagining it's made out of a very malleable thing like rubber. Actually, I have to imagine because it's made out of blue tack, right? So, I can do a continuous deformation of it, I can stretch it out, and it's still topologically equivalent to a sphere. So in topology we are allowed to make these continuous deformations. And so, really, um, the magic of topology is that you forget about certain details. You see this in different areas of mathematics that kind of by half closing your eyes and by forgetting about differences between objects you can get a kind of higher viewpoint 
Like in topology, we disregard lots of details about shapes. For example, we're not interested in the distances and the corners and things of the cube. In our view, a cube is just about the same as a ball. Well, you might think then, if, if everything's the same in topology, then what's the point in studying it? Well, the thing is that everything is not the same. Because some surfaces are topologically different to other surfaces. So let me show you a simple example. This is a torus, okay? It's basically the kind of shape of the inside of a tire or the shape of a donut. So it's a two dimensional surface with a hole in it. And again, you can imagine that you're a little creature um, walking around on this surface and you could walk all around it. And how would you know if you're walking around on a torus? It's a good question. Anyway, I claim that this torus is not topologically equivalent to a sphere. And hopefully you can see that, right? Because we can, we can deform this thing quite a lot. I mean, we can, we can crush it, we can pull things out, we can twist them. We can do all kinds of things, but we're not allowed to stick any two points together that weren't initially close to each other. Basically, the kind of operations we're allowed to do are like this. If two points were close before we do something, then they have to be close after we do something. And if two points were far, far away before we do something, then they have to be far away after we do something. And that's why we're not allowed to do any sticking. So, we're not allowed to sort of stick like this because we had a point up here and a point down here which were far away from each other and then suddenly we've changed the topology of the shape by making these points close so that's an illegal operation okay so all we're allowed to do is um, bending and twisting and things and hopefully you can see that this torus is topologically different to a sphere. So it's sometimes said quite jokingly that a topologist is somebody who can't tell the difference between a donut and a coffee cup. And the reason they say that is because these two objects are essentially topologically equivalent. In other words, if we imagine that this was made out of rubber or something really malleable, we could continuously deform it into this. Or, equivalently, we could change this to make it look like that. Well, let me have a go at doing this uh, in front of you. So, let's try and continuously deform this into something that looks vaguely like a teacup. Okay? It won't be that convincing because I don't really have enough blue tack to make a proper teacup, but let's give it a try. Well there we have it. So you could put you could put your um, hot beverage in here and this is your handle and uh, you could drink your tea out of this. So yes, you can see that these two objects are topologically equivalent to each other. You can look at all kinds of objects around you and think about this. Do they correspond to an object with one hole in them, or two holes, or three holes, etc. So, what I'd like to leave you with is a, is a fairly intriguing puzzle. So I'm going to show you this puzzle now. Okay, so I'd like you to take a look at this object. Essentially this consists of two interlocking rings. I mean, um, if I link my fingers together like this, I'm sort of topologically equivalent 
to a shape like this. It has these two um, rings which will correspond to my fingers being interlinked connected to a solid part. So another way you could think of this, you could think of this as a torus with two holes but one of those holes is kind of linked in with the other one. Okay, So you see this object, take a good look at it. Think about it as a topological object. So think about all the things you could do with this. I mean, you can mess around with it, you can bend it and twist it and, and um, crush pieces together and all sorts of operations. So the problem I'm going to set to you is to transform this object here into this object here. Now you're supposed to do this obeying the laws of topology so you're only allowed to do bending and stretching and twisting you're not allowed to do any tearing or cutting and importantly you're not allowed to do any gluing okay it's actually kind of hard to avoid doing gluing when you're working with blue tack since it so naturally sticks to itself but you're not supposed to do any gluing you're not supposed to make any parts of the shape interface with each other that weren't already close to each other. Okay, And by doing those operations you can in fact turn those interlocking rings into this shape. They are topologically equivalent. And uh, my problem for you is to show how this is done or you know, draw how this is done. So I think it's a lovely problem, it's the kind of thing that you can try and think about in your head, you can sort of carry it around with you and think about it when you're bored. Um, and so I'm going to show you the solution now, but I strongly urge you to, to stop this video now and basically don't watch the solution. I think it's much better if you try and work out this problem for yourself, because it's a really fun problem and it will help you to start to get your head around what topology is all about. A good way to do it is if you can actually get some blue tack or white tack or plasticine or something like that so you can really have a go at this problem physically. Okay and so next time I'm going to talk more about different kinds of simple surfaces. Um, so I'm going to talk about some surfaces which you've seen before and maybe a few that you haven't seen before.